it. Then you see like these hairs coming up off the arcuate. And some of the hairs are red and some of them are blue. Okay, and these are called the interlobular arteries or veins or the cortical, because it's in the cortex, radiata or cortical radiate. Radi radiate. Right, cortical radiate arteries or veins because they radiate out, okay? And then off of these, then you start, you see in this area here of the model, you see like little balls hanging off. Those little balls represent the renal corpuscle, okay? Um, then you start hitting the nephrons, okay? This is, is a blown up segment of this, okay? So here, and it's confusing because you have two blown up segments, one before the other. Um, this is actually more blown up of this. So that's why people hate this model. So if we're going to do this in proportion, this is the most gross that you would see. Okay, this is the next smallest, this side of the model. Not this side with the lime green, but this side of the model is the next. So coming from here, here you see the little balls. Here's a cortical radiate artery, and you see the balls here in a blown-up version of the same thing. Okay? So these balls represent the renal corpuscles. These red balls represent the renal corpuscles portion of the nephron. And this is the cortical radiate vein. This is the arcuate vein, the arcuate artery. And then here, sorry, here you see like this fishnet, this web of capillaries. Okay, and feel free to come closer. Um, this fishnet of webs, those represent the peritubular capillaries. Okay? Okay, so gross, and then the next smallest. So now we're going to move over to this side, which is the next smallest. It should have done this over here and this over here, but oh well. Deal with it. Okay, <laughs> so now we have, now these red balls turn to plum color. They changed the color code, but this is still a good model. Okay, so here we have a plum color um, renal corpuscle. And in the green, this green depicts your proximal convoluted tubule because it's <coughs> proximal because it's closest to the renal corpuscle. So the lime green represents the proximal convoluted tubule. Okay, as we descend that, this is the thin segment of the descending loop of Henle, or you can call it, is, I think she says descending segment, or where is she called? Descending. It? Yeah, a limb. Okay, descending limb, and this is the loop, the hairpin turn, and then the ascending limb, okay, of the loop of Henley. Then you get into this beige color tubule that's also twisted. This is the DC tube, DCT tube, or the distal convoluted tubule is the beige. And number four is the collecting system. What does she ask for collecting system? Duck. Okay, yeah, collecting ducks. So this this lighter color, beige, sorry, I'm running out of colors, is, is your collecting duct or tubule here. Okay? All right, we're going to go to the, the most magnified view on this model, which is here. Okay? All right, so this, this whole thing, if this was closed off, this is the renal corpuscle, okay? And it's just, it's plumb here and it's plumb here, okay? Okay, and then these twisted blue <laughs> vessels represents the glomerulus. These blue vessels represent the glomerulus. And these pink spiders with blue nuclei, you see pink spiders? Uh-oh, we have two sets of pink spiders. We have cuffer cells in the sinusoids of the liver model. <laughs> And then we have pink spiders here. <laughs> but they have a blue center. The, the cuffer cells didn't. But Maybe these. Like octopuses or something. Yeah, like octopus. So, like Marilyn's flower is black eyed Susan. This, so, this is. Yeah, 
yeah. the blue-eyed octopus. Love the blue-eyed octopus cells. I love that. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it's been Kristen approved. Okay, so the blue-eyed octopus cells. These cells represent the podocytes. Okay, so this is really the visceral epithelium of the renal corpuscle. We have podocytes down, right? Yeah, we do. We have podocytes. So the blue-eyed pink octopus are the podocytes. Okay. Now, we have two vessels coming into the glomerulus. One is obviously more muscular than the other. What do you think the muscular one is? The afferent or the efferent arterial? Yes, afferent. <clears throat> so this has a lot of mechanical control. There's some muscle around here, but this is really the gatekeeper of blood flow. I mean, we can close down this to have backflow for more pressure in the glomerulus, but this muscular tube or vessel is the afferent arterial, and number three here, which is a darker red, it's the same color in the body, but is this is the efferent. The efferent has less muscle mass. Okay? Okay. Now, now you see another group of cells here, another structure, and it's kind of, I guess it's kind of purple, mm -hmm. and it's number seven. That's a portion of the distal convoluted tubule coming in proximity to the renal corpuscle or in proximity to the glomerulus. So with that being said, the name of these cells would be juxtaglomerular cells, these purple cells, juxtaglomerular cells. Do we need to know that one, right? You do? No, oh, I'm sorry. I said that wrong. This is part. Back up. Erase that part. Okay. <laughs> Blooper! Okay. <laughs> All right. These, these cells are, are the macula densa cells, the macula denser cells. This is the juxtaglomerular complex between the actual juxtaglomerular cells are these um, smooth muscle cells, but you don't need to know those cells. So the juxtaglomerular cells plus the macula densa cells make the juxtaglomerular complex. complex, yeah. And that helps govern the myogenic response or reflex. Okay, so these purple cells are actually specialized cells don't hurt her, from the distal convoluted tubule. And these macula densa cells also are very good at sensing sodium chloride levels in the tubular fluid. And if there's too much sodium chloride, that means we're making pee way too fast. We're not reclaiming that sodium chloride. Because by the time it gets to here, it already went through the loop, and it, the flow was probably way too fast. So we're going to slow that down, close this up. Okay? So those are the macula densa cells. Okay, so this is probably the hardest model on the whole practical. <laughs>